Hi, my name is Lou Russo, and I'm a client service director here at York Analytical Laboratories. And today, I'm, I'm at the Queens Laboratory, and I'm going to introduce you to our lab director, Christian Carlson, who's going to talk to you about sampling using the super canister. Thank you so much. Hey folks, my name is Christoph Trapalski, lab director here at York Analytical in Queens, the laboratory where we do all of your TO15 analysis. Over the last few months, we've received a lot of questions from clients about TO15 cans and sampling. This is a SUMA canister. The SUMA canister consists of two main parts. The first is the canister itself, which is where we actually collect your sample, and the flow controller, which is the device that is used to meter how much sample is entering the can over whatever time period you decide to collect, whether it's 15 minutes, two hours, eight hours, or even 24 hours. On the can itself, we have the valve, and this is the only valve you'll ever have to turn when you're collecting a sample in the field. Normally, when we send these samples out in the field, the canister will always come to you with the flow controller attached. While it's rare, there are times when the flow controller can become loose during transport. So one of the things to verify before collecting a sample is to make sure that this is tight. If this is tight, you're good to go. However, if it is a little loose, you can go ahead and tighten this knot right here. Finger tight. And then using a 9 16 wrench, just a quarter turn. You have to be careful because over tightening can actually cause leaks. Normally all you need to do is slide the tubing into the end of the flow controller, but to show you what's inside, what we have here is the nut and a two piece ferrule. These slide together to create the seal. Just like so. Tightening this down to create a seal. Sometimes you need to give this a few more turns make sure you're secure. Once we're set up here, we're ready to collect the sample. It's also important to note that the flow controller is only set up to accommodate a quarter inch outer diameter or OD tubing. Once fully connected, we're ready to take a sample. But I should remind you that this tubing is only really needed for subsurface sampling. If you're collecting ambient samples, the tubing is not required. Now, before you start the sample collection, it's important to note the time that you're starting to collect the sample and the vacuum on the gauge. Here on the can is the only gauge that's really truly important. While some flow controllers do get equipped with either an analog or digital gauge, this is the only gauge that you're going to need to take readings off of. This flow controller here is calibrated to collect a 15 minute sample. Calibration information for the flow controller will be found on this tag. Folks, we're getting ready to collect a sample. 15 minutes. All we need to do is just open this valve and away we go. Well, folks, it's been out 15 minutes and we're ready to close the valve. Hand tight is all you need. You can see here at the end of our collection time, we're about minus 10 inches of mercury. It's really important and one of the most important things to note when collecting a SUMA canister with us is that at the end of your collection period, whether it's 15 minutes or 24 hours, that this gauge here is not the zero. There's a variety of reasons for this. It does help us calculate the exact volume that has been collected, but this is the best indicator that we have that nothing has happened to the sample from the time that this valve was closed to when the sample comes back to the laboratory. This final number is the number that you should note on the chain of custody. It's also important to remember that this is a field measurement. When this comes back to the lab prior to analysis, we're actually going to use a NIST certified and calibrated vacuum gauge to measure the exact vacuum of the can. Measurement back in the lab is also very important because while rare, it does happen that these gauges do fail. And if for some reason it does fail, we can still confirm whether an actual sample was collected. Now that we have our sample collected, we here at York have helped our clients 
work through some pretty difficult situations out in the field. And we wanted to throw out a couple of additional things to be mindful of during sample collection, especially when you run into issues. Two of the biggest culprits that we always run into are dust and debris and water. Here in this part of the flow controller is a filter and a very tiny orifice, which gauges uh, how much flow goes through the flow controller. This tiny orifice can be very easily clogged with dust or small particles. It's very important that, especially when you're collecting subsurface samples, to make sure that the flow path is free and clear of any sort of debris. Groundwater in particular can wreak havoc, contaminate, and permanently damage both the flow controller and the can. We at York always recommend that a trap is plumbed somewhere in line to verify that water isn't being sucked into the system. We hope that today's video has helped demystify suma canisters and air sampling. As always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to your project manager.